and it says that uh, the mixed partial derivatives they always the same and that's the conditions which ensure that when when these derivatives are continuous not at the point but around that point so if you have a if you have a point and you have an area around that open area like an open ball and your derivatives are continuous across that open ball then you can expect that derivatives are uh, identical strictly speaking from the mathematical point of view we need to provide we need to see the example where they are not identical in order to convince everyone that these conditions listed in this Clario theorem they are important they are essential so you can't just say they all the time they are identical and there is an example on this slide which shows that that's the example of a function this is the example of a function given like that which has second order mixed partial order derivative second order mixed partial derivatives not identical to each other yeah well i think the next slide actually does the computation let's we'll just look into that that's that's a standard standard example and jonathan Kress put the computations here so look at this what he says well, it's, it's, a, it's a it's a lengthy computation as a matter of fact uh, so before we can even compute the second order partial derivatives we need to compute the first order partial derivatives and given the function given that the function is defined in these two different clauses sometime we need to follow the definition of the def uh, of the derivative look at this so what he says is this if you compute fx and fy derivatives first partial order derivatives for any point which is not the origin we can just use the first year first year stuff which is computed by the rules of differentiation and that's the computation I'm not going to verify that and actually you don't have to verify this on a piece of paper if you don't like you can use maple matlab to verify that i'm quite happy with that now at the point zero first order derivative requires definition by i uh, sorry uh, computation by definition we have to take the limit of this type we have to increment the first like if we go fx at zero zero you have to increment the first variable subtract the value of the function at the origin and divide by the amount of increment there is no any any other way to find the partial derivative at, at the origin for this function well he does so uh yeah, he does so because y is zero this numerator is zero all the time it's the numerator in this computation constant is zero the limit is zero similar evaluation for the y derivative again by definition only there's no any other approach the value comes up now zero again this is the first level of computation it's the first order derivatives now we're ready to go to the second order derivatives first order derivatives they also functions given by two clauses first clause says fx equal to this if point is not origin and fx equal to this if point is origin it, it doesn't it, it's not said here explicitly but that's what it is the same story for the y derivative so here we compute fx y we take fx increment the second one even though this time you see Jonathan Cross didn't put his 0 plus h but effectively it's his 0 plus h you increment the second argument and divide by the amount of the increment well if you use the formula for the fx which is here he did so that's the that's the evaluation and he ended up with negative one if he does oh now he does the similar evaluation for yx this time he take the fy derivative from here from this line and increments the first argument he does the computations and he ends up with one 